Audio Jungle. Hello everyone, myself Narendra Singh Maria and hope you all are doing well. So guys, today we are going to solve gate 2010 performance problem and here this is question number 3, right? So we'll read this problem. An aircraft is climbing at a constant speed in a straight line at a steep angle of climb. The load factor it sustains during the climbing is. So basically, this is the climbing problem. Okay, climbing. Huh? So for the climbing a uh, problem, okay. Now this aircraft is what climbing here with climbing angle gamma. What is the gamma? You can write. Climbing angle and here it is climbing with velocity b infinity. That aircraft weight will be acting downward, all right. And here that lift will be acting perpendicular to the velocity L, which is lift force. We'll resolve this. This is W. This is gamma, so obviously this will also be gamma. So we can write W cos gamma. And if you check, this component will be W sin gamma. All right. Because this aircraft is what climbing, so there will be forward velocity, and this forward velocity will be because of the propelling force that is called thrust. And Opposite to this motion of the aircraft will have a drag force which is opposite to the aircraft. All right, hope you got it. Hmm? So this is the aircraft, no? Maybe it is not visible. This is the aircraft, yes or no? This is the aircraft. So we have resolved all the forces. Just say this is the CG point. And now all the forces you have seen. So <clears throat> we'll resolve this. What you got? Thrust is equal to opposite forces are drag plus weight component, which is nothing but W sine gamma. Okay. Which is nothing but W sine gamma. We'll correct this. All right. Now this is what W sine gamma. What is the lift force check? It is weight cos component w cos gamma this is equation number one and this is equation number two okay now <clears throat> they are asking the load factor huh? the load factor at sustaining during the climb is so what is the load factor what is the load factor it is lift force It is lift force divided by weight, weight of airplane or aircraft. Yes or no? All right. So we can rewrite this equation number two from equation to what we got L is equal to W cos gamma. So we know that load factor is also denoted by n which is nothing but lift divided by weight what is the lift here it is w cos gamma divided by weight what is the weight i can consider w so what is the load factor it is nothing but cos gamma this is the load factor Climbing during climbing of the aircraft, what is the load factor? It is n is equal to cos gamma. Now we'll have a two different different cases. Case one. 
when gamma is zero. When gamma is zero, then what is the mean of it? <clears throat> it means that aircraft is what? Going to the straight and level flight where lift and this is what? Weight. This is what thrust and opposite force will be drag. So this is the level flight. And you know, in this case, what will be the load factor, which is nothing but cos gamma, which is nothing but cos zero, which is nothing but one. And that is true also, L by W, okay? You know, in case of the steady level flight, what is the L? W, what is the thrust? It is drag. So that will be one. So in case of <clears throat> steady level flight, what is the load factor one? So I am just giving the different, different case, okay? like. If I am considering gamma is what zero, then what will happen? So it will become level flight. Level flight. All right. Another case I will take maximum. What is that case two? You can say this is case two is nothing but <clears throat> climbing angle is suppose ninety. What do you what what is the mean of it? Its mean is that aircraft is climbing vertically up yes or no that aircraft is what climbing vertically up it hope you all understand this okay because vertically up one pro once one problem we had solved yes or no so if it is vertically up going this is vertical up going I will say this is what see. So this is vertical going plane. So vertical velocity perpendicular will be lift. And this will be vertical downward will be weight. So obviously it is going up. So thrust force will be in direction of the forward motion and opposite will be drag force. And this is called vertically up climb it is called vertically up climb what it is called vertically up climb now nah. that's so uh, should be very clear so basic concept i am telling you so that you can and because one time in gate question they had asked what is the load factor for the vertical what is the lift coefficient lift for the vertically up climb so that should be very clear so I'm, I'm just explaining the concept so that you you can answer for any question vertically up climb for vertically up climb gamma is what 90 degree now tell me what is the lift force w cos 90 because here for the climbing what is the l you got l was w cos gamma no? so w cos gamma now you can write gamma is what 90 so what is the well, lift becomes zero. So this was the gate question. Okay, another year if you check, this was the gate question for vertically up climb. What was the lift? It it will be zero. And uh, as per equilibrium condition, you can check what is the thrust. Thrust is nothing but drag plus weight. And obviously, in in climbing also you have seen that thrust is equal to uh, drag plus w sine ninety because it will be w sine gamma c here check what is the thrust check here thrust is nothing but d drag plus w sine gamma so here it is vertically up so sine 90 and what is the sine 90 it is simply one so drag plus w so you can check here so two cases i have taken that first was climbing is what zero becomes a steady level climbing is what 90 degree becomes vertically up so in case of a steep climbing, this is the climbing flight, okay? This is the climbing flight. This is the climbing flight. Yes or no? With some angle. Huh? This is the climbing. So climbing means gamma will vary between 0 to 90. But 0 is especially steady level and 90 is especially vertical climbing so you can say gamma will be less than 
90 but it should be greater than 0 that is the this steep climbing yes or no because if you check in this problem it is very clear uh, steep angle of climbing so that is steep angle climbing means it is not exactly 0 it is not exactly 90 in between it is very small angle somewhat no? so uh, for the uh, perfect camp climbing uh, angle you can say perfect climbing reason that's better it can be anything less than 90 it can be anything greater than 0 it can be anything now so what will be your load factor based on this what will be your load factor so load factor if it is exactly 90 okay if it is exactly 90 degree then uh, what is the load factor check n is equal to l by w so l becomes 0 if it is vertical climbing so n load factor becomes 0 yes or no <clears throat> load factor becomes 0 and if it is steady level climbing check so what is the load factor it becomes 1 so it means 0 climbing angle is not possible 90 degree climbing angle is not possible perfect climbing i am saying i am not talking about a vertical climbing and all so it should be less than 90 and greater than 0 climbing angle should be right so that's the reason that load factor should be less than 1 and it should be greater than 0 i hope you all are agree with this analysis so here it was for only one marks i had explained uh, here and took time also reason because inside this question many questions are uh, there okay i mean for the problems you can get uh, the answer for different different question that's my point like for vertical climbing what is the lift force you got it lift force will be zero for vertical climbing what is the load factor you got it it is zero in that way you can uh, say uh, many questions and answers are available for this explanation so be careful for this particular case okay so now we'll go for the answer for the steep climbing angle what should be the load factor equal to one exactly it is not possible why because it becomes a steady level if say equal to one it becomes a steady, a steady level but we don't want a steady level it should be a steep angle of climb hmm? greater than zero not uh, greater than one not possible because cost value if you check maximum is one okay so greater than 100 percent equal to one is not possible because this is the steady level climb that we are not going to discuss we are going to discuss a steep angle of climb greater than 100 percent it is not possible because maximum value of cost is because what is the load factor in case of climbing cost gamma so maximum value of cost uh, is nothing but one so option b is 100 percent wrong positive but less than one and dependent on the weight of the aircraft no it is not depending on the weight of aircraft right what is the load factor it's become for the climbing check load factor for the climbing becomes cost gamma so we don't have any weight dependent uh, uh, function it becomes it is load factor is depending on the uh, climbing angle directly yes or no so that fourth option is not correct also uh, that will be wrong positive but less than one positive but less than one means what it is greater than zero zero greater than zero means positive and less than one so that's the answer so what is your answer option c i hope you all understand this uh, basic so your answer becomes All right, done. Now we'll go for the next question. See, this is the next question. Question number six. This is also for one marks. <clears throat> all others factor remaining constant. All right, all others factor remaining constant. Okay. If the weight of an aircraft increases by 30%, then the takeoff distance increases by approximately okay okay so what we'll do see here this is the takeoff problems okay now check so we'll see solution for this problem <clears throat> approximate i will write directly because i cannot derive here 
this is the solution class so station so i will not derive that part okay directly i will write the formula so approximate take off distance formula i will write directly from there we can go for the solution so what is the approximate uh, take off distance so take off distance you can say it is s g which is also called ground rule distance take off distance or ground rule distance okay so this is given approximate formula i'm giving to you and you remember this formula okay because based on this they had asked question already what is the formula for this 1.21 w by s which is called wing loading divide by rho infinity g cl max into thrust to weight ratio this is the ground roll distance which is also called take off distance approximate formula i have given you use this formula all right and you should remember because it will take time if i will go for derivation and obviously it is not required derivation is not required you need to remember so i am giving the remark point you the remark means you need to note this formula and remember okay you know <coughs> w by s all wing loading weight of the aircraft divided by wing area hmm? thrust weight ratio okay maximum lift coefficient and then density as well as g is nothing but gravitational acceleration all right that is the very <coughs> nominal uh like a, a variable here it is given okay variable in the sense what it is like varying like a, a cl max will be constant but density can be changed weight will be constant area will be constant all right thrust will also up to some extent it is constant for jet engine hmm? Only density is what changing, but here it is cl clearly mentioned all other factors remaining constant. So nothing to worry. You just say this because they are changing the uh, weight of the aircraft. We weight of the aircraft is what changing. Rest everything is what constant. In this formula, weight will also be constant, but here they are saying it is changing. Okay, if it is changing, so rest all the factors are co uh, remaining constant. So we can make it constant. So we'll take proportionality and others component which is constant so i can say now uh, this will be uh, k which is constant all the uh, variables or you simply do one thing i just uh, want to go in short no? i can say all are the constant term only weight i have to write hmm? c w by s divided by c by w so this will be w square because it is w because rest are constant s is constant thrust is constant so w by s and this is in denominator t by w take w up in numerator weight w is the weight so it directly kw square you got or you can say whatever the value here got you can say it is proportionality to w square because i have to check the variation of the takeoff distance with respect to weight so weight will be the our consideration rest all the factors are remaining constant all right i hope you understood this now We'll go for the uh, new steps here. Okay. Is that clear or not? Because whatever the component here I have taken, it is like a see, because that ground rule is what depends on the 
crush to weight ratio that is true round roll is what depends on uh, one upon crush to weight and ground roll also depends upon the wing loading ground roll also depends upon the density these are the factors this is when we'll check the ground roll distance or takeoff distance so these are the factors we have to check for that based on that we have this formula and this formula is what one uh, derivation okay but here as i mentioned i'm not going to derive anything so directly here this formula i have written hmm? this one yes or no and yes sg also depends on the cl mass so these are the factors okay for the this is also why i am writing because this is the related to gate huh? question they are asking from here so you make a remark point for this make a remark what is the sg sg is the ground rule distance sg is ground roll distance or take off distance here all the points whatever i have written it's very very important for get question so that's the reason i have mentioned once again now you can check here this you can write sg 1.21 okay and uh, you can write rho infinity g you can write this s into t this w will go up and you can write w square no problem w by s so s will come in denominator first is already in denominator and uh, in denominator t by w so that w will go in numerator so it becomes w square now here 1.21 1 rho infinity g s t these are the constant terms and w these are what constant terms so our sg is what directly proportional to w square that's the reason here directly i had written this part understood how it comes anyway so <clears throat> now what we'll do we'll take the uh, equation one and two so just say sg is what equal to constant w square this is the number one first case all right this is the first case now what they are saying in the problem they are saying that weight of aircraft increase increases by 30 percent then what will be the takeoff distance increases by approximately so in percentage they are asking anyway we'll find in percentage no problem so we'll write this part right so what will be the sg2 when 30 percent of of weight increases so in that case sg2 will be k1 k will be the constant and it is directly proportional to weight so 30 percent of the weight is what increases so weight are already it was w here 30 percent is what increases 30 percent of w that's the mean of it that's the mean of 30 percent weight increases because sg is equal to kw square so this is the square and now w is what increases by 30 percent so what was the initial weight it was w and in that w 30 percent weight is what increases so 30 percent of w so what i can write here k in bracket it is w plus 30 percent of w means 0. W square. So what is the SG2? Is equal to K. It is 1.3 W square or K 
सिक्स नाइन डब्ल्यू स्क्वायर दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर टू ओके व्हाट इज द इक्वेशन नंबर वन इक्वेशन नंबर वन वाज एस जी इज इक्वल टू के डब्ल्यू स्क्वायर यू जस्ट से दिस वाज एस जी वन बिकॉज इट वाज द केस वन तो के डब्ल्यू स्क्वायर नाउ आई नीड टू राइट द परसेंटेज इंक्रीजेस इन टेक ऑफ डिस्टेंस तो we can write take off distance increases approximately in percentage we need to write so what is the percentage change that will be it is nothing but delta sg divided by sg that is the percentage change how to write delta sg is what sg2 sg1 divided by sg1 final minus initial by initial into 100 that is the percentage change yes or no what is the sg2 k you can write here k 1.69 w square what is the sg1 k w square divided by k w square yes or no into 100 that's the mean of it all right so this value if you check percentage change in take off distance so you can write kw square what you will have kw square inside it is 0.69 divided by kw square into 100 how much it is 69% i hope you all understand this yes or no check option 15% no 30% no 70% yes 105% no so what is the correct answer option c your answer is c that is the correct answer hope you all understand this right so steps are explained well here why because this is the solution okay but in examination you have to go very fast you write the equation directly and immediately you just uh, take sg2 minus sg1 that ratio and you can get the percentage increment in take off distance you should go very fast okay another question this is get 2010 again question number 12 this is again for one marks okay now in this question See, this is the basically standing uh, problems. No, you can check. An aircraft stall. An aircraft stalls at a speed of forty meter per second in a straight level flight. So we'll draw first straight level flight. For this speed is given how much? Forty meter per second. Okay. Lift is equal to weight, and here this is what thrust, and here this is what drag. This yes one. No? Anyway, <clears throat> level flight. The slowest speed at which this aircraft can exude a level turn at bank angle of sixty degree. Anyway. so basically if this aircraft if you check this is the uh, steady level so that is steady level you can show by this diagram okay front view
okay this is what level flow yes or no but what about the turning so you can draw next turning flight okay this will be what is the phi banking hmm? so if you check and the another component of the lift will be l sin l and this is the centrifugal force m v square by s this is the complete force you have resolved here and this is mb square by r yes or no now uh, so this question is we have to calculate what is the speed read it level turn at angle of 60 uh, bank angle of 60 degree, uh, 60 degrees so for the banking angle of 60 degrees they are asking what is the slowest speed at which that aircraft can execute a level turn yeah? turning i told you it is uh, two types of turning horizontal and vertical turning horizontal horizontal turning also called as a level turn so this is the level turn problem all right now for this steady level what is the speed how to calculate we know l is equal to half rho v square s into cl for this steady level what is the condition l is equal to w and thrust is equal to drag check here we have l is equal to w or not yes so what is the speed v is equal to 2l divided by rho s into cl or you can write 2 w divided by rho s cl yes or no this is equation number one we can say like this okay now <clears throat> what is the speed here in case of the turning i will write is speed during turning yes we can write so what will be the speed again L is equal to half rho v square s into cl. What is the L here? Huh? During turning, what is the L? It is W cos gamma. So we can write L is equal to W cos gamma half rho v square s into cl so what is the speed during turning we can write v turning check that formula it will be 2 w cos gamma divided by rho s into cl hope you all are agree this is equation number two we can write like this yes or no what we need to calculate we need to calculate v turning why they have given slowest speed what do you mean by slowest speed see slowest means for the steady level flight it is called stall speed so here they have given stall so this is the stall speed okay in case of the steady level flight this is called stall so stall means minimum how you can get minimum when this is what cl max yes or no similarly they are asking slowest speed during the uh, 
uh, turning. So if, if it is a slowest or minimum speed, then this should be maximum. I hope you understood. Now we can write V turning divided by V stall. If you take the ratio, then what you will get? Sorry, here I think uh, this is L W cos gamma I have written, joining turning, no. Uh, here, mistake check. L cos phi is equal to W. So during turning, what is the L? That's the mistake, huh? we need to correct. L is equal to, I can write W by cos gamma. So what, what I will do, it should be W by cos gamma. Now it is okay. Na? Because check from this formula, L cos phi is equal to W. What is L? W by cos gamma. Or uh, instead of gamma, we'll write phi better. Because gamma is basically for turning and gliding, we are writing no problem. This is the cos. All right. So here I must write phi, not gamma. Sorry. I made mistake. So it is W by cos phi. It is W by cos phi. All right. So we can write this ratio. So we have check. max divide by what is the v stall v stall is 2 w by rho s c l max two w if you solve this what you will get check it is nothing but 1 upon cos. What is the banking angle? Check. Bank angle is 60 degree. No? It is cos 60. So, we will calculate this. So, what is the V turning by V stall? How much it is? It is, where is my calculator? It is one upon root two. Wait, one by cos sixty. Okay, if you take root of it. It is one point four one four two. What is V turning? How much? What is the V stall is given? Forty meter per second. Yes or no? See, 40 meter per second. So you just uh, multiply it by 40. So it is nothing but 56.56 meter per second. Check 56.56 or this. This is your answer. What is correct answer? Answer is options so i am going very slow so that those who are beginner also they can understand okay those who are revising also can understand hmm? so this is the solution for this question all right hope you all understand now we'll go for next problem here this is the another question question number 30 this is for two marks what was the marks for uh, that question? One marks. No? Okay. Now we'll go for this question. This is for two marks. 
question number 13 we'll read this <coughs> a propeller powered aircraft huh? a propeller powered aircraft trimmed to attain maximum range and flying in a straight line level huh? line travels a distance r okay travels a distance r from its takeoff point when it has consumed a weight of fuel equal to 20% of its takeoff weight. If the aircraft continue to fly and consumes total weight of fuel equal to 50% of takeoff weight, the distance between it and takeoff point becomes all right. See, so this problem we can solve they have mentioned this is the takeoff point. Check. This is what takeoff point. First case, they have given the propeller powered aircraft trim to attain a maximum range and flying in a straight line, travel a distance of R from its takeoff point when it's consumed weight of fuel equal to 20% of its takeoff weight. So simply it is like if it started and attending the maximum range, the so maximum range here it is R1, you can say it is R. Up to, up to this, what is the uh, weight of fuel equal to? So the weight of fuel, just try to understand, equal to 20% of its takeoff weight. Try to relate it's very simple if the aircraft continue to fly and consumes a total weight of fuel equal to 50 percent of its takeoff weight again it is saying it is continuing the flight and again at this point okay that range is what obviously this is the first case case one and this is what case two so here, what will be the amount of fuel? It is said 50% of, again it's takeoff weight, of its takeoff weight. You just try to understand the question, okay? Takeoff weight. The distance between its it and takeoff point. So takeoff point is the same here at this point and at this point they are asking distance so i i just say here distance is obviously distance will be the range they are saying distance right what is the mean of distance distance means range again so this is the first case this is the second case hope you all understand this okay so now <clears throat> because it is the propeller powered aircraft so we'll write the range formula for the propeller powered aircraft all right now so we'll write the formula range for propeller powered aircraft yes or no what is the formula range eta p by cp cl by cd ln w naught by wf eta p propeller efficiency Power specific fuel consumption uh, called PSFC. Okay, CL by CD, which is also called L by D, lip to drag ratio. W naught 
इनिशियल वेट और टेक ऑफ वेट डब्ल्यू एफ फाइनल वेट इज इक्वल टू इनिशियल वेट माइनस वेट ऑफ फ्यूल दैट इज द फाइनल वेट लाइक वाट अमाउंट ऑफ द फ्यूल इज वन यू जस्ट रिड्यूस सब्सट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम द इनिशियल वेट देन यू मे गेट फाइनल वेट सो दिस इज द फॉर्मूला ऑल राइट नाउ फ्रॉम दिस फॉर्मूला रेस्ट एवरीथिंग इज वॉट लाइक कॉन्स्टेंट डेटा पी सी पी सी एल बाई सी डी ऑल इट इज कॉन्स्टेंट वट इज द योर पॉइंट ऑफ द कैलकुलेशन इट्स सिंपल ओनली वट इज द पॉइंट ऑफ कैलकुलेशन इट इज रिलेटेड टू द वेट सो आई विल कंसिडर ऑल द कंपोनेंट्स हियर इट इज कॉन्स्टेंट ओके आई मस्ट से ऑल हियर पैरामीटर्स आर कॉन्स्टेंट देन यू विल गेट के एल एन डब्ल्यू नॉट बाई डब्ल्यू एफ आई कैन राइट दिस के दिस इज वॉट कॉन्स्टेंट अप टू हियर दिस इज वॉट कॉन्स्टेंट okay so i have it is denoted by a all right anyway so <clears throat> now my formula will be sorry now my formula will be r is equal to r is equal to a ln w not by wf i will connect it with case 1 case 1 should be r1 okay and here r1 is nothing but r It should be case one, hence R one, and this R one I'm considering first range is what R. Yes or no? Because it is clearly mentioned here. Check distance R range is R is given, so I will write first case R one is R, and this value is nothing but K. Okay, and it is nothing but L n, and here initial weight is what uh, as usual. what is the initial weight w not what is the wf final what is the final weight here check it is clearly mentioned it is uh, consumed weight of the fuel equal to 20% of its take off so final weight you can calculate what will be the final initial is what W not so twenty percent is what consumed so twenty percent consumed means twenty percent fuel will be consumed of the W not so hence W not it is a point two of W not hence it is point eight of W not because it is very nicely it is mentioned that fuel. 20% of the fuel is what consumed see fuel is what 20% wf is what consumed uh, wf one is final one is fuel so where it is fuel i have mentioned so final f wf means final is equal to w not minus c what is the final weight it is w not minus w fuel in first case 20% of the fuel is what consumed 20% of the total weight fuel is what consumed so fuel will be 20% of w not so you can write w not minus uh, 20% of w not that's i have written here check it is pointed w not so what will be the mean of the fuel in this case so in this case it means it is nothing but 0.8 uh, fuel will be point uh, Two W not, and here what is the mean of the fuel? It is point five of W not. Yes or no? Because here clearly mentioned fuel is what twenty percent burn of the total weight of the aircraft. Hmm? Anyway, so W F will be point eight W not. Agree? Now what is the K? K is nothing but R divided by L W not W not cancel out one upon point eight. How much it is? Check calculate. So 
one upon zero point weight one upon zero point eight it is one point two five ln of this point two two three one upon this value it will be four point this is the r1 case two i hope you all understand what is case two r2 we need to calculate it is k ln w not by w final okay what will be the w final in the second case what will be the w final in second case so you know w final is nothing but w not minus w fuel w not minus what is the w fuel here it is clearly mentioned check What is the W fuel for the second case? 50% of the 50% of the takeoff weight. So 50% of the takeoff weight means 50% of the W naught means it is a 0.5 W naught. Yes or no? all right this will be the value now i can write what is the r2 so r2 will be k ln w not by w final we can write k ln w not divided by 0 0.5 w not w not w not cancel out what will be the r2 r2 is k ln it is uh, 1 upon 1 1.5 ln 2 and k into ln 2 is nothing but point six nine three one r2 what is k check k is nothing but 4.48 r check this value so 4.48 r into point six nine three one into four point four eight r so it will be approximate to three point one zero r Check the option. See, 2.5 are wrong. 3.1 is correct. 2.1 is wrong. Exactly 3.1 we are getting here. 3.10. Yes or no? So, what is the correct answer? Answer is B. Hope you all understand. <clears throat> all right. Now, We'll go for the next. Check. <clears throat> this is question number 35. Again, get 2010. It is also asked for two marks. Yes or no? We'll read this question. <clears throat> an aircraft is cruising at an altitude of 9 km. All right. The free stream is static pressure and density at the this altitude is given. So, this is the free stream pressure, this is the density at that altitude, respectively. A pitot tube mounted on the wing senses a pressure. So, this is the pressure. Obviously, pitot tube is measuring. So, this is the total pressure. Ignoring compressibility effect, okay. The cruising speed of the aircraft is approximately. So, see, nicely it is given all the values. So, simple we have to go through the calculation. Check for this one 
ओके सो इट इज क्लियरली मेंशन इट इज माउंटेड ऑन द विंग इट ऑट ट्यूब इज व्हाट माउंटेड ऑन द विंग सो यू जस्ट से हियर इट इज माउंटेड वी कैन से और हियर एनी वेयर एनी वन प्लेस इट कैन बी माउंटेड on the wing it can be mounted or downside it can be mounted it can be mounted on downside okay so <clears throat> this uh, it is flying at 9 km altitude suppose this is what sea level so it is flying at 9 km altitude so at 9 km altitude they have given pressure How much it is given? Three point zero eight ten to power four newton per meter square. At nine kilometer altitude, it is given density also. How much? Point four six seven kg per meter cube. It is mentioned that pitot tube is what sensed. Huh? the pressure so pitot tube will sense the pressure that will be the total pressure what will be the pressure total pressure total pressure which is nothing but 3.31 10 to power 4 newton per meter and this is what obviously it is a static pressure atmospheric pressure whatever the pressure at that altitude is given it is static pressure yes or no so now we will proceed this problem it is simple one only dear <clears throat> static pressure or p infinity is given p infinity at 9 km altitude it is given how much 3.08 tend to power 4 na no? i will write here again 3.08 tend to 4 newton per meter square p total they have given how much it is 3.31 okay which is Denoted by P naught three point three one into ten to power four because we thought you will measure total pressure, All right? Anyway, <clears throat> and density they have given at that altitude is zero point four six seven zero point four six seven kg per meter cube. They are asking ignore compressibility effect. and calculate the speed of the aircraft simple what is the <clears throat> total pressure remember guys at any altitude what will be the pressure will be given it will be static pressure and what pressure will be measured by the device like we taught to you so that pressure will be total pressure always remember okay so total pressure is what the static pressure dynamic pressure all right so p not is equal to ps plus dynamic what is the dynamic pressure half rho v square yes or no we can write this what will be the half rho v square it will be it will be p not minus ps check previous so what will be the v v will be p not minus ps divided by density okay now all the value they have given to us we can calculate 2 into what is the p not check 3.31 tend power 4 3.31 tend power Four minus three point zero eight three point all right density how much it is given I think point four six seven right point four six seven. We calculate this value. 
this is actually true air speed because we are calculating at that particular altitude we are <coughs> neglecting the compressible effect also so it is nothing but 3.31 10 to power 4 minus 3.08 10 to power 4 multiplied by 2 just wait 3.31 10 to power 4 minus 3.08 10 to power 4 okay into so answer into 2 divide by density is 0.467 okay and you will retake the root it is 99.24 Approximate you can write hundred meter per second, no problem. Check ninety nine point two four is approximate hundred. You can say this is answer. Okay. So what is the correct answer? We have here answer is C. Done. Hope you all understand. Okay. So these are the problems it was asked in. Uh, Gate 2010. Okay. And uh, you do hard work, practice all the problems first, whatever it is asked in exam also. So it will help you out like how, what type of question labels they are asking. Okay. Different, different type of question you may be able to solve. So better you practice. Uh, previous year question paper so that will help you out all right all right guys so thank you all thanks so much